Hi, for it's 314 Reactor here. Today, the Halo 3 flighting has begun on PC. So what we're gonna do is install Reshade on it. Do is get the latest Reshade. Again, the link will be down in the description. Open that up, click here to select a game and manage its Reshade installation. Browse, and then you want to go to the installation of the Halo flighting. You wanna go to the MCC folder, binaries, Win64, paste that in here. Then you wanna go to the MCC Win64 shipping.exe. Hit open and then select all the shaders that you want to install in, hit OK. When it gets to the QUINT files, make sure they're all selected because these will be necessary for the ray tracing. Make sure that's in, then we'll download those. Okay, when that's done, it's time to install the latest Reshade Global Illumination shader. You need to go into the link in the description. You need to sign up for the developers Patreon. They'll invite you to their Discord where you can then download the latest betas. Once you've got it, you can open up the zip file and go into reshade-shaders and then drag these two files over. And then on top of that, just want to chuck in the QUINT dither.fx into the QUINT folder here. That can also be grabbed from the Discord. And then once those are in, it should be ready to go. So let's fire it up. So once you're in, you can just hit home and then you can skip the tutorial and then we can begin adding in shader effects. So the one we're interested in, if we go to search, is RT, RT Global Illumination, tick that. And you can begin tweaking. What I'm going to be doing is flicking over to a pre-made preset. This should be the same settings that I had on Halo 2 Remastered. So we'll see how well they work and see if they need any tweaking. So let's start off on Sierra 117. So as we can see when we flick to the lighting channel it's only really doing the weapon this is where we need to go and edit the preprocessor definitions go to reshade depth input is reversed flick that over to one and boom everything's being oh that looks really cool everything's being affected by the ray tracing as we can see so already there we can see there's a lot of ambient occlusion being applied to the trees there and also to the foliage there again giving it a lot more depth that looks really nice may need to be toned down but we'll leave it there for the moment yes i'm playing on easy uh so let's have a look around oh boy that looks really really nice and it's actually affecting the weapon as well which i don't believe it was in the prior two games yeah that's fully affecting the weapon there fairly certain that yeah halo 1 definitely didn't halo 2 didn't either so that's good to see actually oh that's really cool so you can see it's adding the, the light from the bouncing from the grass there and the trees, the foliage. Let's see if we can tone the ambient occlusion down a little bit, just so it's a bit less intrusive. Crank it down to two. Bounce lighting intensity. Whoop, yeah, that's way too high. Let's crank that up to 6.5, I reckon. Got the fade out maxed out. Ray length, ray step amounts maxed out. Yeah, I want to keep ray step amount cranked up to the top. Ray length is at 14. So ray length at 10, you can see there, lowering it actually gives the glow from the ammo counter on the assault rifle a bit of a blue glow. So I think I'm going to keep that there. I'm not quite sure how that setting entirely works, but sometimes when you lower it on certain games, it looks better. So we'll lower that to 10, ray amount at 3, Z sickness at 30. Uh, that's the Halo 2 setting, so I wonder if we crank that up a bit. Oh, yeah, no. So actually, what we want to do is just prevent the gun from making a shadow too far ahead of itself. If we crank it up, it seems to affect the distance. Don't want it too far. So it seems around 65 is good for that because there's no shadow from the gun there excessively. But everything else looks like it's filled in nicely. So that's uh, ray length 10, ray mount 3, ray step amount 20, Z thickness 65, precise light spreading on, ambient occlusion is at 2, bounce lighting is at 6.5 and fade out is maxed. And we're not rendering at half resolution so it looks better. Let's flick over again. This is with the effect on. And then off. Oh yeah. Got the extra lighting effects on the gun, the ambient occlusion, those little cooling ports there. All the foliage looks much nicer, much more dense, much more real with that shadowing underneath it. So we've got a nice bright area here with lots of sun coming in. Just for the effect on. And then off. 
And then back on. See so yeah, again, just more shading in the trees. Really makes it look a lot more dense jungle. Frame rate's not too bad either. Feels like it's in the 40s to 50s. We can double check that. Uh, so it's about 63 there. That's not too bad. It's more than I thought. But I think it is dipping below 60 every now and then. So we've got this nice waterfall area here. This with the effect on. And then the effect off. And then back on. So you can see it's added a quite a bit of bounce lighting from the uh, the water there and the sun going through it. The shadowing. Let's see what's really going on in the lighting channel. Oh yeah, so you got the nice blue glow from the water there. Oh, that looks really good. All the shadowing, the nice lighting, even the uh, like the wash from all the water coming down is providing a nice effect. Very, very nice. This looks really good. In fact, even the default game at 4K looks very, very good. It really holds up. Let's engage some enemies here. So while we're engaging the enemies, let's have a look at the light channel to see what's going on with the effects. There we go. Oh, so you can see the bounce lighting from all the plasma flying around there. Really nice. And then we flick back over. So this is a really nice open area. Lots of lighting and tree cover. This is with the effect on. And then we're switching it off. And then back on. So you can see it adds the sh extra shading and bounce lighting around the grass. And the ambient occlusion on the leaves and stuff there just adds so much depth. Really, really nice. You've got light bouncing off onto that body there and onto the rock. Much more natural lighting. Looks really, really nice. And under the tree canopy there, there's just more darkness, as you'd expect. Let's check out the flare here. So you can see how uh, that flare is having an effect on the environment around it. With the light bouncing off. Really, really nice. Let's uh, go back to normal. Flick the effect off. And back on. Really, really nice. Really nice. And it plays really smoothly as well. Like I, th like I said, I think there's frame dips, but overall, that's still playing nicely. Another open area here. The effect on. And then switch it off. And then back on. Much more light affected by the sun there, as you can see. Much more shadowing in the darker areas. And there's even a bit of a glow coming off of the uh, ammo counter screen there as well. Yeah, so you can see, like around there, as I flick the effect on and off, there's an actual blue glow coming from the screen. That is awesome. Such a subtle effect, but that's really cool. So let's skip ahead and check out Mission 7, the arc, see how that looks. So let's just hop up on this rock. Lighting channel. So you can see there's a lot of glow from the sun here, bouncing the lighting around. Really, really nice. Again, fully affecting the battle rifle and the sniper rifle here as well. In fact, there's even a green glow coming from the screen of the sniper rifle. Really, really cool. Love that. That is really cool. So we switch the effect off. Back on. That is awesome. Again, a very subtle effect, but that is... Oh, that's really cool. I really like that. There's a bit of an excessive glow around characters there. But overall, kind of just shows that there's a sun beaming down on us here. So that, you know... Makes sense. It's just a bit odd how there's kind of a sort of aura around them, but I'm not sure. It could be where the rays are catching up. I'm not sure. It could just be a blur to do with that. So you can see with the setting on, again, you've got extra lighting on those rocks, extra shadowing in the areas you'd imagine. Nice shadowing from the grunts there in the bottom left as they're walking around. Again, check out the lighting channel. A lot of extra detail there. So in the light channel, you can see that the uh, jackal shields are uh, also having an effect. You can see the blue glow coming from them. So you've got the blue glow from the shields. You've got the glow effects from the plasma. So we've got a plasma pistol here. Let's see how the lighting from that affects everything around it. 
So there's not too much there, but you can definitely see the extra shading around the grunt there. And just generally, it makes it makes the light from that little stalk there look a lot more vibrant. You've got also a bit of bounce lighting coming from the depths of that cave. So you can see it definitely a glow there from the bounce lighting having an effect. And also shading around that rock there, as you can see. So that looks really cool. It's working very nicely with the ambient occlusion. The lighting's not as strong as it is in Halo 1. Unfortunately, like even in the normal game engine, but still you can see it's having an effect there. We've got the hunters here Let's see on the lighting channel how their fuel rod cannons look Yep, nice shadowing around on them there even a bit of self-shadowing kind of thing going on And the green glow coming from their fuel rod cannons back to normal before we die Turn the GI off. And then back on. All the extra lighting there. So let's do a frame rate comparison. Let's turn the effect off and get a measure of the frame rate. And it's at 97.8 frames a second, which is just under my refresh rate. Turn the effect on and we're down to 65 frames a second. It's quite a hefty cost, over 30 frames a second, like 34, 35 frames a second. So here we are in an internal area. I'll be really fascinated to see what's going on with the lighting here. So let's get a good position. So this with the effect on. And we turn the effect off. And then back on. So you can see there's extra glow from that terminal there. Extra shadowing, ambient occlusion, extra stuff going on. Quite a lot of the lighting seems to be affected by the HUD. But that's unavoidable. Check out the lighting channel. So yeah, quite a lot. You can see at the top and bottom areas there, the HUD is greatly affecting the lighting. The shadowing depth there is really, really nice. And the little bits of shadowing there. The final level here. And let's see how that looks. So here we are, a nice snowy landscape. Let's uh, get a quick look here, just looking over there. Just the effect on. Let's flick it off. Then back on. See, you've got lots of extra glow on the ice. Snow there. Again, lots and lots of ambient occlusion. Let's check out the lighting channel to see what it's really doing under the hood. So, let's move forward. So, we've got this icy area here. Sometimes the uh, RTGI shader can work really well with ice, as I've seen on stuff like Unreal Tournament 3. So, let's flick the effect off. And then back on. Yeah. Makes it look a lot more icy and cold. The only trouble is you're seeing the polygon faces where it's being lit, which is a bit of a downer, but again, not really a deal breaker. So here we are, the control room. Let's turn the effect off and then back on. So it doesn't have too much of an effect there. Mainly the closer up areas. So even in more chaotic areas like this, it's still running pretty smooth. Every now and then there's a frame dip. Uh, I'm running this on a Core i7-6700K with an RTX 2080 and it's running pretty smooth. So that's not bad. And I'm running it at 4K resolution as well. It's unfortunate that the lighting effects were kind of toned down in Halo 3. Well, they were toned down in Halo 2 as well, but Halo 2 Anniversary brought them back up to Halo 1 levels where everything would glow in an amazing way. Let's see if we can head inside. So, I just want to see this internal area. So the effect on, and then switching it off, and then back on. So you can see you've got a lot of extra glow from those lights, a lot of extra shadowing. Gives it a lot more depth. Just makes the lighting look so much more real and bounce off the metallic surfaces better. So here we are in a cutscene, bit of a spoiler. Although if you're watching this video, you're probably aware that there's gonna be spoilers. Or you've already played Halo 3, so it doesn't matter. Yank me too. So this with the effect on, turn it off. I'm not gonna and then back on. So you can see there's extra shading there on the characters. Check out the lighting channel. Just a few more days. We don't have a few more days. 
So you can especially see in uh, Guilty Spark there, there's additional lighting in the little uh, socket and shading. Alright, so let's just take a quick look at the lighting channel here. Plenty of extra lighting from the red beam that's coming from the 343 Guilty Spark there. Although only where it impacts, it seems. Let's fire the Spartan laser. So yeah, the lighting effects are much more subtle in this game. I wonder if we can crank up the bounce lighting intensity. So I've just cranked up the bounce lighting a bit there, just to try and get a bit more of a lighting effect. Uh, let's try looking at the Covenant quickly, and I'll make this my last level that we're looking at with the ray tracing shader on. So this with the bounce lighting uh, cranked up to 7.0. More of an effect there from the grass especially, and definitely more of an effect from the LCD screen with the ammo counter on the guns, which is really cool. So there's a bit of flickering there from the rays in the grass there, but not too bad. Certainly makes the leaves look more realistic and the shadowing underneath them. Let's move forward into another combat area and see how the lighting's doing with that bounce lighting set up higher. Oh yeah, that's nice. It's nice seeing that plasma muzzle flash. So you can see the extra glow from the lighting there and extra shadowing behind that grunt's body there. Being added in, really nice. Let's just check out the uh, Warthog here. This is the effect on. And then off. Oh yeah, and then back on. So you can definitely see the extra glow from the sun bouncing off from the grass onto the Warthog here. Extra shadowing underneath it and on the wheels. Really, really nice. Just brings, uh, brings everything a lot more to life. It looks really, really nice. I really love those effects. I mean, this game looks uh, pretty amazing anyway, even with it off. They've done well with the remaster. So yeah, that was how to get ray tracing in Halo 3. All the links are in the description, so go down there and check it out. Please do like and subscribe. I hope everyone's staying safe. Keep an eye out for future videos and tech projects. And I'll see you in the next video.